Hey, this is Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick on behalf of AccuTools here to introduce the AccuTools Blue Flame Combustion Analyzer. I want to take a few minutes and go over combustion analysis and combustion analyzers because a lot of guys buy them and they do not use them to their full potential. And you really, if you uh, purchase an analyzer, you really want to make sure you're leveraging everything it'll do. Because not only will it do the combustion testing, but it'll also do your ambient CO testing, your differential pressure testing, your total external static pressure testing, your gas pressure testing, your CAS uh, combustion air zone depressurization testing, um, and also things like your differential temperature to make sure that you uh, get your right temperature right across your furnace. So I want to take a couple minutes and show you everything that the analyzer will do. We'll uh, set up here on my furnace. It's getting into fall here. It's time for me to do a combustion test on my furnace anyway. If you don't own a combustion analyzer and work on gas appliances, um, you're really doing yourself and your customers a disservice because a combustion analyzer tells us not only how safely the appliance is operating, but also uh, how efficiently it's operating. And with a couple little things I'm going to show you here in this video on leveraging the analyzer to its fullest, we can get the appliance set up with just this one tool and make almost all the measurements that we need to make to get a proper commissioning. So let's go ahead, we'll dive into this real quick and I'll get things rolling and, and uh, show you everything you need to know about combustion analysis. So one of the first tests that we wanna do on any home is an ambient CO test on here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the analyzer and let it power up while I'm talking. So you power the analyzer on up outside and what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get a reference level of CO of effectively zero. Outdoor air, uh, the CO in the city uh, might be a little bit higher, might be one or two parts per million. But what we want to see is what is the CO level uh, inside relative to outdoors. So what the analyzer is doing is it's turning on, it's pulling in fresh air, it's going through a zeroing process to where we're saying, okay, effectively outside is zero CO, and we want to make sure that the CO in the house isn't any higher. Now again, you know, there's a lot of a lot of things that could produce CO in a home. You know, I'm here working on the furnace, but right next to it, I notice that we got a pellet stove, and the pellet stove's not on right now. But if that pellet stove is running, Again, that's another potential source of CO. This one happens to be one that's sidewall vented, so it's got a power venter in there. And a lot of these also have a potentiometer or a pot in there that we can adjust to get the excess air trimmed right on the pellet stove when it's under full fire. But that's just a sidebar on there on the, on the pellet stove. But look for other things like this because these are appliances that can be tested and these are also appliances that can contribute to background CO in the home. So now that the CO uh, sensor has gone through its zeroing. We're going to go to CO measurement here and tap that and you can see that the pump is started and our, our CO right now is zero, our ambient is zero, and our peak is zero. What this is is now everything's been nulled out. Now it could be once in a while it'll go from zero to one and that can be completely normal on there. Sometimes there's background noises on sensors they change temperatures and things like that. If I'm standing out here and it's a zero degree day getting this zeroed out and I go inside I am going to change temperature of my analyzer a little bit and that could uh, make it drift one or two parts per million on there and that's normal. What I want to make sure of is that my CO is between zero and nine parts per million and no higher than that in the home uh, for continuous occup occupancy on there. And again, there's safe levels of CO that are uh, outlined in the guide on there. So now that we've got the analyzer nulled out here, you can see actually it's got a peak of one because it just uh, went up even though we're outside here. So you can see that's completely normal. Let's go inside and we'll do a ambient CO test. So now that we've got the analyzer zeroed here, you can see that it's, it's reading about one PPM ambient and one PPM peak. You wanna hold the probe about chest level and you'll just check each floor of the house. So I'm on the first floor of the house, I'll do the CO test down here. I'll walk to the second floor of the home, do a CO test up on the second floor, then probably walk to the third floor of the house and do a CO test up there. Well, CO doesn't stratify, meaning it, it doesn't uh, go to the top or the bottom of the house. Convective air currents do, and there can be times that the CO is higher on one level than another, or we could have an appliance up there that's making a concentrated level of CO on one floor of the, of the space. So we should always check each level, and we can see right here that our zero was zero ppm when we started. Uh, ambient CO is one, peak CO is one. When I hit complete on that, I hit complete, and then it stores that reading and we're good to go. So ambient CO testing is the first and probably one of the more important functions of a combustion analyzer and ambient CO should be checked on every single job every time. Personally, when I'm doing combustion testing, I almost always do it from inside the house. I have no problem at all drilling a hole in the flue pipe and then we use either a high temperature silicone or a brass set screw to go in and screw it into the flue pipe to block the hole. But it is also appropriate to test from outside. So you can see out here, I got my blue flame analyzer. I just stuck it to the gas line because again, it's got some pretty heavy duty magnets in there. 
put my probe right in the flue gas here and I'm measuring the flue gas, the stack temperature, everything from outside. And because I have the app that I can start and stop the, uh, the combustion readings, I can actually you know, connect to this, have it running, go inside and start and stop the pump on the analyzer, get my readings to my furnace and actually do everything from a uh, remote location. Now, the Bluetooth range isn't spectacular on this, it's about 30 feet. But if I do lose connection, I can just walk back in range, it'll reconnect to the uh, app again and I can see my readings. So worst case, I might be on this side of the basement and I gotta walk over to this side to get my readings, but I don't have to do everything from outdoors and it really makes commissioning the furnace a lot easier to do. So just something to keep in mind, you don't have to always drill a hole in the flue pipe. Personal preference for me, I always do. But uh, if you can't, this is the alternative method of measuring the flue gases on a 90 plus furnace. So one of the services that we actually provide for AccuTools is not only incorporating their products into MeasureQuick application, but we also help them with uh, providing the marketing materials and training materials to their customers. And if you haven't done it yet, uh, take a few minutes, go onto the AccuTools website and go to the Blue Flame Analyzer and download the AccuTools Combustion Guide. We took a lot of time putting this guide together. It walks you through all the processes that you need to do in combustion analysis, but also it walks you through uh, each different type of appliance, so we get the, you know, some of our plain readings here, but then we get into each type of appliance, 70% efficient appliances, 80% efficient appliances, 90s, and even things with fuel oil and uh, hot water tanks to help you really get into this and understand what the readings should be on each appliance. And if you have this guide side by side with the combustion analyzer, it's gonna be a huge help and I'll show you how we're gonna use them side by side when we get to actually doing the combustion testing. So before you start using the Blue Flame Analyzer, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have all the ports configured correctly. So you can see right here, I do have one accessory item, which is a fuel piece ATB1 uh, K-type thermocouple. This is just a standard off-the-shelf K-type thermocouple I picked up at a supply house. And I'm using this to measure uh, in the uh, intake stack here so I can get the outdoor air temperature of the, get, of the air coming into the furnace. I need that so I can calculate a net stack temperature, which is actually the, the, uh, the flue gas temperature minus the outdoor air temperature. And that'll calculate the efficiency with the analyzer. So I got this plugged in the bottom here. Right next to it is my stack thermocouple, which is measuring my flue gas temperature. And then down below the stack thermocouple on the left, that's your draft sensing port. So I have this plugged in to the far left hand side of the analyzer. And then on the opposite side on the right, you can see down here I have my uh, trap and I have my filter, my water filter accessory. And that down there is tied to the far right side of the analyzer. That's the gas inlet that will actually analyze the flue gases as they go through here. So you have to make sure that all these things are hooked up correctly. Otherwise, the analyzer will not work right and you won't get any kind of good data out of the analyzer at all. But once you have it configured this way, you can even store it in the case this way and don't have to worry about uh, connect connecting and disconnecting it every single time. So step three to combustion testing is to set the fuel pressure to the manufacturer's recommended pressure. And what we're doing here is we're getting it set up initially to get the fuel pressure to get a baseline. And then what we're going to do is we'll go outside and clock the meter. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hook up my, my gas pressure tap. And these ream furnaces are really nice because they happen to have a, a manifold pressure tap right on the side of the furnace. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that plug out and I'll screw this in here. If you don't have all the fittings, hoses, and accessories, again, this is something you can pick up at a supply house, or uh, I know True Tech Tools carries this whole kit online that's got the silicone hose, the barb fittings, static pressure fittings, etc. This is, becomes really handy for testing with a combustion analyzer. Now you can see I have my probe out of the stack here, it's just hanging here, and I'm gonna take the other side of my analyzer at the bottom, on this bottom port right here, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my analyzer on the bottom port right here, and then all I'm gonna do here is go ahead and hit and accept the zero. So I'm gonna just get a zero point on there and re-zero the combustion analyzer. So all I'm doing now is it has a draft gauge built in there and the draft gauge is extremely sensitive. It reads down to the Pascal range. So what we have to do is we have to make sure that we zero the analyzer out so that we get a zero point to start with. So now I can go upstairs and get the furnace started. So I'll go ahead and do that. All right, so this is a full modulation furnace. So we couldn't just simply uh, put a jumper wire on it. So I had to go upstairs put it into the uh, installer's mode and now I have it set to 100% full fire. We're gonna go ahead now and adjust the manifold pressure on here. You can see it's at 3.417. I'm gonna go ahead and just slowly turn this Allen wrench until I get this up to 3.5 inches of water column. 3.47, 3.48, 49, 3.514. So this is tenths, hundred thousandths of an inch of water column here. So 
You can see it's going to fluctuate a little bit, but we're right at 3.5 inches of water column. And we'll just, just crank it down just a little bit of a hair there. So this is about the manufacturer's uh, required manifold pressure at three and a half inches. So now that we got that done, we're going to go outside, clock the meter, and see what the actual input is and see how close we actually are. So we're going to go ahead and clock the meter here. And I've just got my iPhone app open on the, stop, on the stopwatch. And uh, I'm going to wait till it gets around to the top of the dial so that we can uh, get a good starting position and mark. So now we're started going around. This is a half cubic foot dial, meaning that we have to let it go around two times to get a cubic foot of gas. The half cubic foot dial is probably the least accurate uh, on the whole uh, meter. So, you know, you do want to let it go around twice at minimum. You can let it go around four times, divide the reading by two. Uh, in this case, we'll let it go around twice for the video. Just crossed at about 22 seconds. So it should be about 44 seconds or 42 seconds uh, by the time we get the, the, the total uh, clock here. So we're just about halfway around again, and we're coming up on the mark. So three quarters of the way to go. And mark. So we're right at 42.22 seconds. So let's go ahead, we'll go downstairs and see what that means on our meter clocking chart. So the meter clocked at 42 seconds, so now we can go ahead and check the actual input. So on the last page of the combustion guide is a gas meter clocking dial. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on that. And that's a great part about having this on your iPad is you can zoom in and look at all the reference material and have it literally right at your fingertips. So you can see on the center of the guide at 42 seconds, I'm at exactly 86,000 BTUs of input. But this chart is rated for 1,000 BTUs, so we have to make some corrections. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to call my gas supplier and find out what my heat content is. In this case, in Ohio, we're at 1,025 BTUs per cubic foot. So you can see I took 1,025 divided by 1,000. That gives me 1.025 uh, multiplier on there. So I need to take whatever my input is, in this case 86,000, multiply it times 1.025, and my actual input's at 88,150. That's pretty spot on, being this thing is uh, 90,000 BTUs, but let's see what the manifold pressure would have to be set at to get it exact. So now that we've got a known input at a known manifold pressure, we can actually calculate what the new manifold pressure will be to get the input where we want it at 90,000 BTUs. And this is a whole heck of a lot easier than actually going out and adjusting the fuel pressure than going back and clocking the meter over and over again. So the equation comes from Bernoulli and it just simply states that the quantity two equals quantity one times the square root of the P2 divided by P1, where Q1 is our current input of gas at 88,150, P1 is our current manifold pressure at three and a half inches of water column, Q2 is our desired input at 90,000 BTUs and P2 is the new manifold pressure that we're gonna solve for. So if we put it right in the equation as is, it'd be 90,000 equals 88,150 times the square root of P2 divided by three and a half inches of water column. So if we rearrange that and we'll solve for P2, it ends up being the quantity 90,000 BTUs divided by 88,150 squared times three and a half inches equals P2, or P2 equals 3.65 inches of water column. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll set the gas pressure for 3.65 inches of water column, and we'll have that input spot on and we don't have to worry about adjusting that again. So now that I've gone ahead and got the input correct, I went ahead and disconnected my manometer and I've got this plugged back up again. And you probably will not find your furnace uh, as exact as mine was. If you remember a couple of years ago, I actually went through this and changed the orifices on it and got it tuned up correctly. So my input is really quite spot on at three and a half inches of water column. Uh, don't expect yours to be quite that accurate. Uh, we'll find them all over the place, all over the country. Heat content of gas can be anywhere from 950 BTUs to 1,050 BTUs. And depending on where you're located, you're probably gonna have to make a little more adjustment than I made on the appliance. But now we're gonna go ahead and get set up for combustion testing. And uh, I've gone ahead and put the plug in here. Always make sure you get your plug back in because that'll be a real exciting thing if you don't. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, cover back on to the furnace here. Now this is an important step. A lot of guys miss this when they're doing combustion testing. And you wanna make sure that you put the cover back on because this is the way the appliance will be operating. It's not operating with the covers off. And so when we put the cover back on here, and I'm just screwing this on snug here so we got it good and tight, what I'm, a couple of things are gonna happen. Number one, I'm gonna be pulling combustion air now through this intake pipe, obviously exhausting out my exhaust pipe. But this is a sealed combustion appliance now, and I'm gonna be testing it in the way it's gonna be operating. 
If I have this door off and this pipe is plugged up, it's going to completely change the combustion of this appliance. So I want to test it as it's operating. So I put everything back together. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn the furnace back on and we'll actually do our combustion test. All right, so now we got the appliance again set to 100% full fire and we're going to go ahead and do our combustion test. Probably one of my favorite features here, you know, I got the, the guide up here with an iPad is I can sweep up from the bottom and I'm going to sweep up from the bottom here and I'm going to pull up my uh, toolbar here at the bottom. If I grab my blue flame and just drag it over to the right hand side, it'll open up next to it so I can actually see the combustion guide and the analyzer at the same time. You'll see it right away that my analyzer came up blue flame serial number 124672. If you haven't paired your analyzer in, yours uh, will not come in until you go into the pairing process and pair it. One piece of advice I'll give you on pairing, because once in a while it gets a little confusing because all of them come up as new device. And so one of the things I tell people is open up the app, get into pairing mode, let all the new devices pop up, then turn on your analyzer and it'll be the last new device that comes up, select that. And then once it's selected once, it'll always stay uh, blue flame and you don't have to go through the pairing process again. So I've got this all up and running here, and I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, connect to my analyzer here, and you can see right away it comes up. And I can always drag this box over and change the size of the two uh, screens on here, but I can start and stop. I'm going to go ahead and take my analyzer probe now. I pulled my plug here that I used to block my vent hole here, slide it into the stack, pull it about halfway out. Now I drilled my hole so it's exactly the right size for my combustion analyzer probe. If yours isn't, make sure you're using this cone and slide it all the way in, turn it in and lock it because you don't want combustion air or room air pulling around your, your uh, stack on a negative pressure appliance. You don't want exhaust gas leaking out in your face on a positive pressure appliance. In this case, it's filling the whole hole so we're in good shape here. Now I can start and stop the combustion analyzer from the app, so I'm going to go ahead and push start there and it's going to automatically start and I'm going to do my whole combustion test on my iPad. It's a much better user interface than anything else out there today. A lot of times what I like to do is switch over to the graph portion on the analyzer and the graph just allows me to see when the stack temperature is stable, the O2 is stable, and the CO air free are stable, which are really the only things the analyzer is measuring. And what I want to make sure is I have nice stable uh, stack temperature and O2 and CO before I do any evaluation of the system. A rising or falling CO or, or O2 can be indicators of a problem, so I want to make sure everything's stable before I really look at the efficiency and the safety of the appliance. In this case here, you can see they're coming down pretty quickly. My stack temperature's just about flattened out. My O2 and my CO look good. And the reason things are stabilizing so quickly is the appliance was already in operation. So again, you don't want to necessarily put your probe in the stack and watch the appliance light off and see the high peak CO level. It doesn't really mean anything. We're trying to test the appliance under its steady state operating conditions. And this is about as close as we're going to get there. So you can see our stack temperature still climbing a little bit. and. Uh, but it's, it's looking like it's flattening out. We'll give this a couple more seconds and then we'll make our combustion analysis. So I'm gonna go back to the table here. And in this case here, I'm just gonna swipe over and give myself a little bit more room so I can see my uh, combustion test results. And I can zoom in and I can see now what my, uh, all my readings should be for this type of an appliance. So the first thing I wanna look at is my fuel pressure, which we had set at 3.5 inches. We know that's spot on, we already did that test. The next thing is my excess air. I'm looking for between 25 and 75% excess air. In this case right here, I have 57% excess air, spot on, perfect, exactly where I want to see it. The next reading is my O2 reading between 4.2 and 9%. I'm at 7.6%, right in the center of the range. Again, a very good reading. Carbon monoxide, less than 100 parts per million CO air free. My CO air free reading here is 29 parts per million. Very low CO air free, appliance is running great. So again, we'll go to the next reading. Stack temperature between 180 and 120. So I scroll here and see my stack temperature is at 122. Now that might be cause for an alarm, but it's 75 degrees upstairs in my house right now. And I've been running the appliance for a few minutes, just going through some cuts in the video. And so my return air temperature is elevated. Typically when we're talking 120 degrees maximum stack temperature, it's about 70 degrees uh, return air temperature. Because I'm hotter, it's adding to my overall stack temperature that's completely normal on here. So again, that's not gonna make me fret because I have a, a stack temperature that's a couple degrees above the target point on there. You gotta sometimes consider to the environmental variable. So if it's an 80 degree day and I'm starting a furnace, I'll expect to see a higher stack temperature simply because my return air is hot and my outdoor air are hot, totally normal. So now we got the stack temperature out of the way. The rest of these things, uh, well, we actually got uh, combustion study state efficiency 
between 89 and 98 percent. And if I look here, you can see that my net efficiency is 88.7 and my gross efficiency is 89.5. So what that means is, is that I am condensing. If my net and my, and my gross are exactly the same, I'm not condensing in my condensing appliance. Now, if my return error was 65 or 68, where it typically be, my efficiency would be closer to 94%. And I expect to see this little lower efficiency because I have this warm return error and I'm not condensing like I would normally condense because my flue gases are simply hotter than they should be. So everything looks really good there. But as long as my stack temperature is below my dew point temperature. So my dew point's 123.9, almost 124, and my stack temperature is 122.8. As long as my uh, stack temperature is below my dew point, I am condensing, and this is a condensing appliance. So everything looks really good right there. So now let's go ahead and we'll do a couple more real quick checks on this and we'll get to uh, next to differential temperature testing. All right, so what I've gone ahead and done is I've put in two T-type thermocouples in the bottom of my analyzer. T2 is my supply air temperature, T1 is my return air. So I just went ahead and ran this up to my supply duct. I have it in the air stream and I have one over here in my return air stream. And all I gotta do now is scroll down to differential temperature, select differential temp, and now you can see I've got my differential temperature reading on my analyzer. So again, I've been able to use this thing for my gas pressure, uh, for my draft pressure, for my fuel analysis, and now I'm using it for my temperature rise in my furnace. My temperature rise is supposed to be 60 degrees on my appliance. I'm at 57, 58 degrees, so I'm spot on again where I wanna be and everything's running perfectly. So one last measurement we can make on this 90 plus furnace, although for this it's not quite as critical, is the draft pressure measurement or the, the uh, vent pressure measurement. In order to do that, I have to pull the probe from the stack. I'm going to go ahead and hit the zero point on here and zero this out. And then I'm going to go ahead and place this back into the, uh, into the combustion gases and just see what the vent pressure is. Now, in this case here, it's reading about 0.012. And you can see my guide says anywhere from 0.02 to 0.08. And again, that is typical pressures. Now, this one's running higher than that. And I've actually poured through the uh, manufacturer's directions, installation directions on this and I can't find anywhere the, where the manufacturer specifies vent pressure. So this is just literally a reading I'm making without any knowledge of what it should be. And a lot of times, uh, if, there, if you don't know what the measurement should be, it really doesn't matter what it is. It's just something to observe in here because the furnace is running fine, the combustion's good, the vent pressure is running about 0.16 or so, which is higher than the guide, about double what the guide says in there. But again, it's all relative. It's a 90 plus furnace. It's, uh, it actually has an exhaust accelerator on the end. So this may be the pressure the manufacturer wants. The, the point of this is, is that what's in the guide is a general guideline in there. It is not definitive. This is what it's gonna be every single time, every manufacturer on there. But typically these are the readings that you're gonna see. And if you don't have any other thing to use, this is a very, very good starting point. And all of this is uh, safe to, to set an appliance up to these types of specifications because we're following manufacturer specifications as far as getting the input correct and the temperature rise correct which are the two most critical elements of setting up a gas furnace. So again, we got the vent pressure measured here. We'll note it on here and it's good to have it for the future, but it's not anything that in this case, we're gonna worry about uh, falling into any range because we don't have anything from the manufacturer to actually compare it to. So one of the last things we wanna do is test our combustion air zone and uh, the analyzer again is a great tool for doing that. And what we're trying to make sure is that we don't have too much negative pressure in here that the atmospheric appliance, which I have a hot water tank over here, would be overcome by the, uh, by the furnace in the room here. Like if I had any return air leakage here, I got a small hole open right here. If I could suck enough air into this hole right here and make this room negative, it might cause problems for my hot water tank. And this hole's so tiny, it probably wouldn't do it. But I could have other leakage in my ductwork that's gonna do that. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna test this and right now you'll notice I got the door open right here. So I'm gonna take the door with it open. I'm gonna go ahead and go to differential pressure and I'm gonna hit the menu key here and change the units to Pascals. So this is hectopascals, pastels. And now you can see I'm at three Pascals. I'm gonna zero this out. So now door open, zero on my uh, gauge right here. And I'm gonna just go ahead and close the door. Now what I've done here before I close the door here is I have a tube that's run all the way down across the floor and run to the outside of this room. So when I close this door, what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna change the room pressure or could change the room pressure. Now the door is shut. So now you can see that I shut the door, I actually went to negative one Pascals, right? I went from 
zero neutral to negative one pascals. I give this a couple seconds here to see if it gets any deeper, but that means that there is a slight negative pressure in this room. Now, if I go back to my combustion guide here again, and I go to my 80 plus or 90 plus appliance and zoom in on that, I'll see that my uh, maximum allowable pressure in this confined space in here is negative pa 10 pascals. So I'm well within limits on here. I'm not gonna overcome the furnace. Now, here's what you gotta realize though. Also in this room is a hot water tank. So while I can have depressur depressurization limits of negative 10, I gotta consider everything else that's in this space. So I'm gonna go back here for just a minute and I'm gonna go and look at my atmospheric appliance or go to my hot water tank. And my hot water tank has a negative four Pascal limit. Now again, I'm at negative one. But let's look what else is in this space. I have a dryer in here. I'm gonna just step over here for a minute and I'm gonna turn on the dryer. And so now I have a dryer running and the dryer's also drawing a negative pressure in this space because it's exhausting air out. So now you can see now that I have the dryer on, my space which was neutral a second ago, went from neutral to negative one with a furnace running and now it's at negative three pascals with a dryer running because I'm exhausting additional air out of here. Now again, going back to my guide here, my limit is negative four pascals, and I just stepped on my tube here, so you don't want to step on your tube or to make your gauge go crazy. My limit is negative four pascals, I'm at negative two pascals, so that means that I don't anticipate my hot water tank would backdraft, but again, I need to test it, and we'll show you that in just a second. All right, so we've gone through and we tested the furnace on here, and uh, the furnace is running great, but you know we have other appliances in the combustion air zone that really should be tested. If you're gonna buy a combustion analyzer, fully leverage the darn thing and make sure you're using it for testing not only the furnace, but also stuff like hot water tanks, stoves, ovens, dryers, uh, gas log sets, whatever you might have in the home that you can test. There are multiple, multiple sources of CO in a home, so we always wanna make sure that we're testing everything. And that's really our job as HVAC technicians to make sure that the, the health of the occupants is good in here and we're not you know, getting furnace fixation, fixating on just the furnace, and, and totally ignoring this hot water tank over here, which could be a major source of CO. Over the years, I've tested a lot of hot water tanks and I've seen some hot water tanks that were worse, much worse than furnaces I've seen over the years because they were completely neglected on here. Hot water tank is very, very easy to test. Uh, one thing too, I wanna to show you, you know, for a few bucks, I think this was less than 20 bucks, I bought this little tablet holder off of Amazon. So now I got really nice hands-free operation for my iPad on here. And the way that the AccuTools Blue Flame works, I really don't have to keep my hand on the analyzer all the time. Got the analyzer hooked up magnetically. I went ahead and started the water. I have a slop sink over here. I ran water in a slop sink until the hot water tank kicked on. That gave me plenty of cold water to work with so that I can uh, now have this hot water tank running for a few minutes and actually do the combustion test on it. My analyzer's zeroed out. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take the probe here and I've drilled a hole in the top of my vent hood so I can get down inside the stack on here. Now, inside a hot water tank, there's a turbulator. It goes up and it actually has two sides on that. So we'll want a combustion test on both sides and make sure that the combustion's safe on both sides because it can actually be different on one side of the burner than the other. Hot water tank burners can be tilted. They can have dirt on them and other problems that are gonna cause the thing to not read uh, the same on one side as the other. So I've got it put into the stack here. I'm just gonna go ahead and push start on my iPad. Again, really cool, I can control everything from the iPad. The combustion readings are starting to come in here, so we'll give this a few seconds to stabilize. I'll go back to my graph and watch for that to stabilize on the graph on this. Now, one of the features, again, I love on the AccuTools product is we can do the split screen on the application. So I have my guide right up alongside, right next to my, uh, uh, combustion reading so I can compare and see how things are are working side by side and make sure that everything's doing what I want it to do. You can see here my stack temperature still coming up so I'm going to give that a couple more seconds here and while that's running I can go back to the table and uh, I'll just slide over here and I'm going to look at my readings on my uh, on my draft here. Now a lot of guys and including me, it don't always set fuel pressure on a hot water tank. It's not the easiest thing to get to. So we're gonna just test and make sure the combustion readings fall into range and everything's in, in fairly good shape on here. And you'll notice one of the first things I want you to see is that this is putting off zero parts per million of CO and zero CO air free. 
On a lot of analyzers, you won't ever see that, and that's because they don't have a very critical component, which is called a NOx filter. And a NOx filter filters out oxides of nitrogen, which give you false high CO readings. So if you've never seen zero CO on an appliance, absolutely possible, very, very typical on a good burning appliance, because we're, we're always providing it with a ton of excess air, and that excess air assures complete combustion. In this case here, no CO on this burner, and that's the way that a burner should operate uh, when it's operating perfectly. So this is a very, very good thing to see right here. And I can go back to my graph here and I can see my stack temperature is now starting to flatline so we can start to evaluate this appliance. So I'm gonna look at my guide here. My excess air should be between 31 and 91%. And I can see here I'm running about 24 on my excess air. It's a little bit on the low side, so I probably would take this apart and make sure that it's not dirty inside, make sure that uh, there's no cobwebs or spider webs on there just to make sure that our excess air reading is not too low. But with a safe CO here, um, you know, I, uh, I do want to test it, but I'm not really panicked about the low excess air on this. They very, very carefully control um, draft, uh, natural draft on a hot water tank, so low excess air is quite common on there. My stack temperature, uh, so you can see my sorry, next reading, carbon monoxide air free, less than 100 parts per million. We're still at zero. That's great. Stack temperature 325 to 500. We're at 454 on the high end, but this hot water tank's turned up high. You can see I got another pipe here. I actually use it for a hot water heating system for a radiant floor system on my house. So I run a higher end than the hot water. And then on my temperature rise here, 40 to 100 degrees of temperature rise on the water. So the water's coming in at 55 degrees, let's say, and coming out at 100 and, uh, 120 or so on there, 117 uh, degrees on there. So that should be in the correct range. My study state efficiency, 75 to 84 degrees. So right now I'm at 80.9% uh, efficiency. And you'll notice the net and the gross are the same because this is a non-condensing appliance. My, my stack temperature on this thing is 458 degrees. My dew point temperature is 130. So I'm way above the dew point temperature versus a 90 plus appliance where my stack temperature is below the dew point, right? Because I'm way above the dew point temperature, there's no stack chance of condensing on this thing here. So all my combustion readings look good. Gross and net efficiency look good. I'm going to stop the analyzer for a minute here. You'll see that my draft test readings come up. That's what those little arrows are on there. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of the stack here for just a minute. And I'm going to go ahead and put this back up into my into my stack here. And again, I drilled my hole the right size so I'm not leaking air around my uh, stack. So we're in, a, we're in a good position there. And on the bottom here, I'm just going to, for just a second, disconnect my, my tube on my analyzer, and I'm gonna push my draft pressure and push start. So what that's gonna do now is it's gonna, it's gonna allow the draft gauge to zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that just a second to stabilize, and it's at uh, negative 0 0.02 or so. I'm gonna hit zero point on there. That's gonna zero that out, then I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect this tube to the, uh, to the draft port on the analyzer. So now you can see it's starting to read draft. It's negative 0 0.02, negative 0.34. We'll let that run till it stabilizes here. About negative 0 0.60, 0 0.62. We'll still let it still rise, and so we'll let that run. And draft is stable at about 0 0.07, so we're going to hit stop. When we push stop, that's going to record that reading on there. And you notice the pump started to get on the analyzer, and that's because it's clearing out the uh, the fluid gases out of the analyzer still. So it pauses the pump while you're taking the draft reading, then it restarts the pump again to clear the flue gases out. But now I got my draft pressure at 0 0.073. Acceptable range is between uh, uh, 0.02 and 0.04. Draft is a little bit high on there, but it, again, it's not so excessive that it's gonna cause a, a problem with the appliance on there. Again, these are general ranges that we wanna see things, but they aren't definitive, absolute. This is what it's gotta be. The only definitive ranges in this whole guide are the CO levels, and those CO levels are on page two. And those are the uh, uh, combustion uh, carbon monoxide thresholds. Those are uh, gospel. Those are, you know, those are not to be exceeded on there. So that's a, a guideline for our industry that you guys need to follow. The rest of the guide here is typical, what you see typically in here. And if you use those typical readings, uh, they, won't, they won't lead you astray on there. They're totally safe to use. So again, uh, very, very uh, multi-use tool here. We're able to do our draft, our CAS pressure, our temperature rise in our hot water tank, um, the combustion test in the hot water tank, make sure this thing's not making CO, make sure it's safe for the customer. And again, uh, combustion analyzer, well, they, they are expensive.
They are not a big investment when you consider all the tools that you get in one on there. This is Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick on behalf of AccuTools. Thanks a lot for watching.